you ever been off Monarch, Mioka? Before you met the captain, I mean. Nah, I mostly just drank and hunted. As soon as you stop to dream of other things, that'll be the day something sneaks up and eats you. Don't fret. I'm watching your back now. If anything tries to eat us, I'll give it a mighty whack on the nose. Well, I'll be damned. You watch my back, I'll watch yours. Might improve the smell. <laughs> yeah, but the noise. Talk. Hey, got a favor to ask you. Figure while we're out here in the wilderness anyhow, we might stop in on an old friend of mine. Preferably before we get to Hiram's. It's on the way, don't worry. You don't seem the type to run off and get yourself killed, and I could use the help. I'll be up front with you. I hate asking for help. I hate it. Every time I give someone the opportunity to disappoint me, they seem to make it their most immediate goal. But this, what I'm thinking, it's dangerous. Nothing I can't, we can't handle. I used to run with a band of hunters, friends, six of us. We were on Monarch when the corporations pulled out and we helped a lot of people pick up the pieces. I haven't seen two of them in years, and the rest I know to be dead. I'd like to gather their effects and bury them all in the same places, like the family we once were. First, we go to Hayes. I buried him a ways from our encampment. I need to pay my respects. I'll show you where he rests. He had a medallion in his effects. That's what I'll bring home to bury. Then we find my two lost trackers and bring them home. A long time ago, we built an encampment in one of Monarch's cave systems. Trouble is, a mana queen showed up and kicked us all out. If we can find Rebecca and Anders, they'll know how to lure her out. Then we kill the bitch and bury everyone's medallions together. <laughs> Thanks, Cap. Good old Stellar Bay, only place on the planet. Right, here's the road, follow it south.
visitor? What an unexpected surprise. Please, come in. Come in. I'm getting real bad fight or flight right now. Watch your step. People ain't this friendly outside city walls. The Edgewater deserters were perfectly nice, and they lived outside the city walls. Well, maybe not Adelaide, but everyone else. That's the spirit. Now come in. Make yourselves comfortable. Excellent. You've arrived at just the right time. My wife is putting the finishing touches on dinner. Please, make yourself at home until it's ready. Something ain't right about this. What a pleasant surprise. And just when I was beginning to fear we'd seen the last of good company for a spell. Yet the Eternal provides, does it not? The Eternal does not desire that we huddle and hide, crowded in by walls. We all share the spark of the Divine, and we were made to spread it across the stars. Out here, we are free. And even apart from society, the universe provides for us, as your being here proves. Just that your presence here is a gift to us, and one that we don't take for granted. Look at me, prattling on as if this gravy is going to cook itself. Why don't you run along until we are ready for dinner? Oh, hello there. You come for... for, uh, dinner? That's nice. We had someone else over uh, a week ago or yesterday. I forget. Now there's no call for being rude, Captain. Maybe he's just having a hard day. You don't know. You got a funny way of putting things. I used to be good with words. But it feels like there's this fog. I... Uh, sorry, have we talked about this before? Can we talk more after dinner? I usually feel better after dinner. Oh, hi there. Did you come to bring us more of those rocket candies? That's wonderful. There was this other man who used to bring them. Not anymore, though. He said they were making us sick. Mom and Papa got real mad at him for that. They went to have a talk with him. Afterwards, they said he wasn't coming back again. Mom and Papa said he came from the city. When we got sick one time, he brought those candies to make us well again. And they worked. Now we feel better than ever. Mama says they're a gift from the Eternal. Okay, maybe I'll see you at dinner. The way she said that reminded me of a rat licking its chops. Be careful. What are you doing in my room? Maybe I'll tell Mama and Papa. Then you'll be sorry. You're trying to steal the last of my rocket candies, aren't you? The ones that come in a bottle with a rocket ship on it. Like the other man used to bring.
so for sodden asshole. Ain't enough that the raps eat everyone. Now people are do doing it too. You gotta be sick. What's this? You're tracking blood into the kitchen. Oh dear. You've been nosy, haven't you? Of course not. What better end for the day than a meal around the family table? And what more noble purpose for you than to bring us together? Nonsense. What the Eternal provides, we shall gladly accept. And there you have it. Can't argue with that, can I? They deserve to die so quickly. How can we explain this to folks? Everybody with missing family will wonder if... These people.
Um, pretty sure that's an intercom, Captain. See? There's a button. It says intercom. There's more than one of you? Oh, thank the Eternal. I'm Huxley. Uh, Hux, if you're lazy. I'm stuck. My friends and I were scavenging here, and a Mata Queen showed up. Then Raptodon, who's a void blasted mess. I ran in here, and... Um, now the door's locked. Little help? Thank you so much. It was getting all stuffy in there, and I was getting a mite lightheaded, and I think maybe I was gonna die. Now I'm out here, and I'm headed back to Amber Heights. Still landing yourself in trouble, eh, Hux? Oh, hi, Mioka. Um, you mind giving me an escort back home? I'm... Oh, you're traveling with someone. Never mind. Oh, sure, I'm a runner. I'm used to getting all dizzy, and hey, who's your identical, slightly blurry friend? Thanks a lot, lady. Careful. Only things you'll find in the ruins are liable to shoot you or eat you. Or both. I wonder who used to live here. Do you suppose anyone remembers anymore? Of them. 
Watch your feet. The sulfur pools don't just stink. Well, hello, and welcome to the home of the Iconoclasts. I'm Rose. Please, take a pamphlet. In it, you'll find everything you need to know about Graham, his philosophous truths, and the Iconoclast way. He wrote it himself, you know. Oh, oh no, I'm so sorry. I keep forgetting we're out of pamphlets. Gosh, blast it. That paper they use makes excellent kindling, you know. If they ever get more, you ought to grab some. What? Nioka? That's why you wanted so many? You said you were just spreading the word. While you keep rude company, you're welcome all the same. We're the only free people in Halcyon. No corporations, no shackles, no problems. We make our own living here. 
Some of us hunt, some of us scavenge the ruins left by the corporations when they abandoned us. You're welcome to stay with us, so long as you can earn your keep. The new boy! Yes, he's quite clever. He took to our teachings very quickly. Last I saw him, he was headed into one of the buildings up the hill. Welcome to the Emporium. I'm Bronson. It ain't really a store. Think of me more like a quartermaster, and a chef, and a handyman, and whatever else we need. Oh, sure. Sulfur ain't so good on metals, and replacing parts is expensive. So we fix things till we can't. It was like that in Edgewater, too. Used to be when Bess would break down, I'd have to borrow parts from the grinder to get her working again, and vice versa. Wasn't too pretty, and it kept me on my toes, but I still made do all right. <laughs> That's the way of it, no doubt. Just last week, I sacrificed my favorite heat slicer to replace the coils on my stove. We gotta eat. Eating means hunting. Hunting means armaments. We used to let people take what they will, but then some idiot shot some other idiot over cards. So Zora set up a system. You fuck up, you don't get to buy gear. You play nice, you do. Yeah, plenty. If you're the type to fix a thing or two, I've got a couple reports I need to follow up on. The pipe's up on Milton's house burst. Someone needs to shut him off. Then there are the cables outside the bar. A sprat chewed through them, and now they're spitting lightning. Then there's the old guardhouse, outside town on the way to the old Bayside Terrace. Someone needs to reset the comms breaker there. I ought to tell you, most of these systems are routed through one of our terminals. You might be able to handle some of them remotely if you know your way around a computer. We sent Milton out to check on the comms tower a while ago. Ain't heard back. I'd wager he got eight. Up the hill. It's right on the cliff's edge. I ought to mention, the Iconoclasts are loyal folk. Treat them right, they'll do the same. Turn on them, they'll open fire without a second thought. Everybody... Oh, hello. Good to see you again. Damn right. Ain't nothing in the wilderness can stop me, except being locked up. Well, on the way back, I twisted something in my leg, foot area. Where does my foot end and my leg begin? Wherever that is, it hurts. So, no runs for me for a little while. Time to kick back and relax. Uh, <laughs> I did a dumb thing. I was trying to get away from a terror ray. Usually, you can just get a ways from their nest and they'll stop following you. But this one was really persistent. Chased me for, I don't know, forever. Scratched me up black good. I barely got away. Then I tripped over a void damn rock. A rock! Not even a slippery one. Till it stops hurting, I guess. Zora says I'll be fine in a month or so. Huh? Why? Oh, ha, you're funny. Looks like I'm not the only new face around here. What do I call you, stranger? Welcome to Amber Heights, Captain. Call me Tucker. You here to join the Iconoclasts? Help us free this world? I am not a little boy. Haven't been one for decades, no matter what my mama wishes. I take it she's still looking for me? I'd hope she'd accept my decision. Let me guess. You're here to collect it. Well, I can tell you right now, it is not gonna happen. I won't go back. My entire life, she locked me in Stellar Bay because she was afraid. Don't go play with friends. Bantasaurs will tear your arms off. Don't leave the city. Raptodons will spit acid on your face. 
marauders can violate you. You'd fall in a sulfur pool. I stuck around way too long, ruled by her fears. I'm 42 years old, but she still sees me as a little boy in need of her protection. I won't stand for it, I tell you. She doesn't want to see me as anything other than her baby boy. Why would I go back again? What'll be different this time? <sighs> You're right. I can do this. I just need to stand my ground and make her see she can't control me anymore. No one can. Seems like a nice little town. What are you buying? I'll be damned. Thanks for doing that. Here. Zora sets aside a bit or two for people who help out. Before you ask, no, it ain't pay. Just being generous to folks who do a good turn. Oh, Captain, you did it! My little boy is back safe and sound! Tell the Captain how grateful we are, Tuck Tuck. Mama, I told you that I'm not staying. I just came back to talk to you about why I left. Then I'm going back to Amber Heights. Oh, we'll get that silliness sorted out. You're safe here with me, and that's how it's going to stay. Isn't that right? What a sour thing to say. My little boy will always need me. I'm his mama, you know. Mama, what I need is for you to listen to what I want for once. But that's between us. Now you promised the captain a reward, so settle up. Then you and me are gonna have a long talk. Here, kind stranger. This is every bit I've scrimped and scraped for years to save. But it's more than worth it to have my Tuck Tuck home safe again.
Don't worry about me, Captain. Mama and I'll work this out. What do you think of the unreliable? Unreliable Parvati. There's always something to fix, and it's neat working in the Aether. I always took Atmo for granted. Now, if I drill through the hole, we all suffocate. Exciting, you know? I, I'm not sure I wanted to know that. Being in space sets me on edge enough. You know about stellar emissions? A actually, I probably shouldn't tell you about those. I mean, not... I'd give you a friendlier welcome, but I'm up to my elbows and salt tuna guts. You're spatting your spirits, Belma. You notice my mood? I'm surprised you can see straight today. I could be seeing triple and I'd still think you're being unkind. I just might find it funnier. Will you try wrangling half a ton of dead fish with decades old equipment and see what it does for your disposition? Anyway, what do you folks need? That he's got his load on and I'm stuck covering his shift? That's... Wow. I sure feel like an ass now. Oh, sure. Because Monarch's just teeming with experts in the finer points of salt tuna health. Still, it's good to know what happened to him. And that I ought to start looking for a replacement. Something else on your mind? Well, I see you've had a sobering effect on our friend Nioka. Sir, please stop. Forgive me, Celia. I couldn't help myself. Anyway, what can I do for you? You weren't supposed to look. I asked you to delete it. didn't mean for any harm to come to you. This has been my albatross. The great shame of my career. I give MSI everything. My work, my youth, my left kidney, and for years, I was a joke to them. Ugh, one of the executives required a transplant. I thought volunteering to donate might improve my prospects. Apparently not. In charge of a scrap heap of a city. Abandoned by the board and surviving only through the hypocrisy of our trading partners. I hadn't thought of it that way. But perhaps there's something to that. Thank you for that. Or was there something else? Oh, yes. I'm going to be up all night with this. All those blanks waiting to be filled, boxes waiting to be ticked. Try to control yourself, sir. Have you any idea how powerful this is? Corporations have been toppled with less. See, Celia? She gets it. I told you she would. So you did, sir. The world isn't changed with guns and speeches, much as Graham and his followers would like to think, but rather with meticulous documentation. How charmingly quaint. But this is an electronic form. No ink need be wasted. It's an expression, sir? Well, it really shouldn't be. Electronic data is much easier to disseminate, but I digress. For our part, a bill of liquidation slash transfer form 52 will protect our holdings on Monarch by temporarily assigning them to a pass-through entity once we drop our bomb on the board. Corporate espionage. How was that, Celia? Did I sell it? Your best delivery yet, sir. 
Getting ahead of myself again. Happens to the best of us, sir. I have reason to believe that one of the other corporations is operating on Monarch. Illegally and in secret. Those bastards. Leave us to our perils, then come back just to reap what they can. If we can find proof, I can use that as leverage to... encourage certain powers that be to accept our Bolt 52 and reinstate us on the board. You really think so? I admit I've been hatching this scheme for quite some time. I just needed someone capable to help me carry it out. If someone is operating here, then Catherine's almost certainly supplying them out of Fallbrook. Perhaps she could be convinced to tell you where they are. Oh, I imagine you do. But as much as I love your can-do attitude and dangerous gravitas, Catherine handles all of our shipments. So it would be best if you could leave her in one piece. Is that how you people put it? Once you, uh, subtly work out where this corporate facility might be, bring back proof of its operation. Maybe some nice letterhead. Or someone working there. That would do it. A foolproof plan if I ever heard one. I'll leave the execution to you. I don't know what it is, but my gun's been acting funny. Used to be, I had to correct for a bit of leftward drag. Got used to standing just so, and after a while, it put a thorn in my side, something awful. Lately, though, it ain't pulling. I find my stance much improved. Oh, that's real good to hear. It took me a while to... Uh, never mind. What? Girl, have you been touching my stuff? I'm sorry, I should have asked. I just got real bored, and... I seen you leaning, and the gun was sitting right there. You know, the last time I caught someone messing with my equipment, I threw them in a sulfur pool. But I appreciate the help. You want to make modifications? Just come ask me, all right? I ain't gonna bite. to see you again. What, oh, in Milton's place? Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Me and my diary have got some catching up to do. Never seen you before. Take my advice, move on. Get off world if you can. If you can't, get to the bay. I've been halfway around T1. <laughs> Monarch, they call it now. Been around it twice. Stood at the hot pole and the cold. Nothing on this moon for nobody. Just a lot of heartbreak. It's pretty simple, kid. I sit at the bar, I drink, I mind my own business. That's it.
kid. I ain't got but half a liver left. And what's there don't work so good, and I can still drink you under the table. Look, if you want to buy the drinks, I'll do my bit to keep you entertained. Just don't ask me to dance. I can't repay no kindnesses now. All right, so, I reckon one of the most interesting places I've been is the hot pole. You know what that is? <laughs> no, kid. Not that kind of hot pole. This moon ain't big enough to rotate. It's locked. One side always facing Olympus, the other always facing away. Olympus might not be a star, but it throws off ass loads of heat. Monarch's hot pole is the part that's closest to the gas giant. It's in the middle of this big mountain plateau. Volcanoes so high, the peaks are in space. O2 breathers. The heat from Olympus is worse, though. Close your eyes, you can see rays bursting through your eyeballs. Full streaks of light. The funny thing is, down in the middle there's just smooth rock. Circular-like. All the dust blown away. Pale gray with hair fine cracks all over. I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe I was lightheaded from the O2. But I felt like I had to take off the breather for a moment, put my ear to the ground. I did get a burn on the low before I smartened up, put a towel under me. It was at the edge of hearing, deep down, far off, irregular. Tap, 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 tap. The sound of a bird pecking out of a shell. When there's a ground quake now, I hold my breath. Because I don't know if it's Olympus squeezing us for gravity, or wings getting stretched. A great many things. I'll tell you what. You want to listen to an old man ramble? There might be a job in it for you. I used to run with a squad of mercenaries here. Good folk. A fella named Lamont introduced me. Thing is, I ain't seen them in an age. Stands to reason they got themselves eight. Better folk than you and me. It don't take much of a slip to end up in a sulfur pool. Or a rap stomach. We split ways around the time this twice fucked moon got abandoned. Thing is, I got myself some fond memories. We had some keepsakes of ours we kept in a lockbox, and I've been thinking about seeing it found. Appreciate it, kid. I'll mark an outpost on your map. We spent a lot of time out there. Might be a good place to start. Here's a key for the door. Manta Queen. Yeah, we felled it, mind. But we lost two runners and five gun hands. A total failure, then. So much for the ruins. And hell only knows where the Van Oys are. They never showed. I'm sure they're... Ah, let's talk later. It seems we have company. Hey. Ah, the good captain. My iconoclast sing your praises. I'm glad the eternal truth has finally guided you to us. <laughs> me neither. One of our runners likes to sing, and it drives me insane. One of our runners? 
That's Huxley, and she's still recovering. I had wondered why it's been so quiet lately. Now, why have you come? The Iconoclasts are free folk. We live under our rules, motivated by our own beliefs. All petals on the same flower of enlightenment. Meanwhile, the board strangles the will of its workers. It is the penultimate exercise of a poisoned society where people are enslaved by a corporate ladder. We seek to replace their way of life with ours. Philosophism is the key to unlocking their shackles. This is not anarchy. Society requires structure, Captain. It is just that the board's structure is killing the colony. Ours will not. All right. Awakening is available to all whose minds are ready to accept it. What would you like to know? Ah, the Eternal. We are all part of the consciousness of the cosmos. Each of us plays a tiny role in the universe's continual journey toward understanding itself. You and I, and the rats and the mantis swarms. Divinity is in us all, and the eternal is that divinity. Everyone, regardless of ability to believe, is another facet of the universe contemplating its own existence. The point of no return. When your mind fully opens to the eternal truth, Every philosophist experiences it along the path to enlightenment. For many, it is the first brush with the cold of death, when they realize that all of their lives have boiled down into the single truth of that moment. Mine was witnessing my friend and colleague transform into the very evil we sought to combat. Now he runs MSI, just like the overlords before him. You know, you aren't the first to make that joke. Not in the sense of a single entity, fashioning the universe as a whittler fashions a flute. The universe came into being over time, organically, naturally, and without purpose. In that sense, I suppose you could say that in the interest of finding its purpose, the universe itself created all living things. No offense, but I ain't following any map you draw. You are uncannily observant. All right. Before all this, I was a writer for MSI's product catalog. It was my purpose to spread awareness of Saltuna in its various forms. The certainty with which I spun among the other cogs in their machines stifled creativity and personal growth. That came much later after Sanjar had taken over. As he drifted closer to the corporate regime, I drifted further from it. I'd known a little about philosophism on the fringes of society, and as I learned more, I found that I was already on the path without even knowing. The freedom it teaches is the same freedom that I desire. Why have you come? A great many things, in fact. We could always use a hand rounding up supplies. Or... Now, here's an idea. There's an old printing press I've been trying to get up and running. I have always dreamed of subverting the colony's periodicals and turning the board's own propaganda against them. If I could get my message directly in the hands of Byzantium citizens, I'm sure they'd recognize the truth. Will you aid us in our cause? Wonderful. I requisitioned replacement rollers for it some time ago. Huxley should have delivered them yesterday. Speaking of which, where is Huxley? You bought rollers? You haven't even cleared the wraps out yet. 
What are you doing wasting bits on... <sighs> Forget it. Huxley's still recovering. She won't be up for a run for a while yet. It seems we're out a runner. If you intend to help our cause, I'll ask you to meet our MSI supplier in her stead. So you're her mysterious savior. She sings your praises. That girl and her songs, so eager to learn, so bright-eyed, so... tone-deaf. She meets us in the ruins of Bayside Terrace. From our compound, follow the road north. One of our sympathizers, a woman named Carlotta, periodically buys goods on our behalf from Stellar Bay's store. Stellar Bay has caught on, but they remain friendly, though the goods now come at a considerable markup. Wonderful. While you're at it, I wonder if Carlotta still has those high-capacity cartridges? Grab a few, will you? There should be some funds left over from the last shipment. We can use them to copy and modify radio serials. Yes, not just magazines, but their precious dramas. Unbelievable. I hope I don't have to tell you this, but if there is extra money, would you mind buying, I don't know, food and medicine? Graham. If you need me, I'll be in triage. 